and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And I'm actually going to start today by talking about yesterday's video. If you have not looked at yesterday's video, which features a puzzle by Philip Newman that defies belief. Literally, it defies belief. In fact, when I first saw it, I said, there is no way this Sudoku can exist. Please have a go at the puzzle. It is, it's, a, it's a killer Sudoku that features just 18 cells in cages. It, I, I mean, I'm saying this and I still can't really believe it's possible to do it because, you, of course, many of you will know this. Um, a Sudoku or a classic Sudoku has to have 17 digits to be unique. Well, Philip's puzzle yesterday had 18 caged cells and that was it. And obviously in a cage, you don't actually know where the digits go in the cage. So... <sighs> Both Mark and I are lost for words. It is one of the most incredible discoveries in the history of Sudoku. I kid you not. So please, please, I'll try and put a, um, a card on the screen. If, if you do have a look at it and do try the puzzle, it really is beautiful. Um, now, speaking of beautiful puzzles, I have an apology to make about the puzzle on the screen, which is called Gravity, and it's by Jovial. Um, now, this appeared, uh, I think it must be a couple of months ago on Logic Masters Germany. And I knew it was out and I knew it was garnering great reviews and I had every intention of us trying to solve it on the channel. But somehow I don't think we ever did. It's possible It's possible Mark did it and I just don't know. But I don't think we ever did this. And that's what we're going to put right today. Uh, and Jovial actually sent us an email to suggest we might want to try it. We did want to do it, Jovial. I'm so sorry we, we, ha we haven't done it yet. Um, but yeah, hopefully we're going to put that right today. And now, of course, Jovial is responsible for the Sudoku extravaganza over on Patreon at the moment. So if you are a patron of the channel, get yourself over there as well and play 20 puzzles, all of them approachable, all of them beautiful, each one sort of um, showcasing, I suppose, one of the classic Sudoku variants. Um, so there is indeed a Thermo Sudoku in that pack. There's also a Killer Sudoku, an Arrow Sudoku, a Between Line Sudoku, etc., etc. It's magnificent, so just have a go. And if you do manage to finish all 20 puzzles, send in the solution because then you'll be in with a chance of winning the Sudoku Cushion. Now, you've still got 10 days, actually, to get your answer in, and you'll be about the 800th entry. <laughs> Literally, we've had 800 correct solutions so far. Um, what, el what else do I want to mention? Well, also over on Patreon, but not behind the paywall, we have the Sudoku Murder Mystery Hunt, and do have a look at that, too. That's been getting incredible reviews over the last two or three days, and, it, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just awesome. It's a story, it's Sudoku, and it's entertaining. What more could you ask for? Now, with all that said, let's get to the rules of gravity. A very simple today. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. So we've got normal thermo rules. I don't know why we've got two. Oh, well, I was wondering why uh, whoever put this into the software has given me purple thermos and gray thermos, but it might be because these thermos cross just to make it very clear how they move. Now it's called gravity as well. Do we know why? The answer is no. I guess gravity affects the mercury in thermometers slightly, but uh, if you're not familiar with thermo Sudoku, the way it works is you've got to put the lowest digit on a thermo in the bulb. So let's say that's a three. Now this square, as we move up the thermometer, it's like mercury, we have to we have to make sure the digits rise. So this would have to be higher than a three. It doesn't have to be a four, that could be a five, that could be a seven, that could be a nine. And that would be a totally legitimate way of filling in that thermo. So do have a go. The way to play as always is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. Now normally my tactic with thermo Sudoku is to start with the longest thermo and that one has length seven. Now, what I probably won't do, I'm not going to commit to not doing this, but Mark would instantly label up every cell on this. What I tend to do is just label the start and end cells and stare and hope that inspiration strikes. Um, yeah, OK, I'm not sure if this is anything, but there's definitely something interesting about the geometry of this box in relation to those two squares and possibly these two squares as well, because wherever um, Whatever we put in this domino obviously won't be able to go in any of those three squares because of Sudoku, but also cannot repeat on its own thermo. 
So these two squares have to make a home for themselves in box three in those three squares. So two of these are found in two of these three squares, which might mean something. Let me just think about that for a second. Um, hmm, I'm not sure actually. Uh, also, these two squares here have the same effect look. We can't repeat those on the, their own thermo. They can't be in those squares by Sudoku. So this domino has to go in those three squares. So it would be very useful. Ah, now hang on. In fact, if that's a one look, it has to go there because a one, if we think about one in the context of a thermo, where can a one go on a thermometer? Only ever in the bulb. So if this is a one, because we couldn't put a one in those squares or these squares, the one would go there. Right, and that means this square is not a two. Why is this square not a two? Let me show you. If that square is a two, because we now know this is a one and would go here, the problem here is that this bulb is also a one because we know from the blue highlighting that we have to put the two in one of these squares and the two can't go too high up its thermometer because if that was a two, that would be a one and that would be a zero and that's not going to break the rules of Sudoku. So the two would go here and the one would have to go there where it would clash. So that cannot be a two. And that means it's at least three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, yeah, okay. So this is at least at least three. And if that's at least three, I will pencil mark now because now I've reduced every cell on this thermo to just one of two options. Um, and that feels, well, apart from this one, I don't think we can reduce that one. So that does feel like progress. So now we've got very high digits in orange which have to make their home in two of those three squares. Ooh, I'm not actually sure we can do anything with that. If I, if I knew this was a one, the orange squares would have to go there because the one would have to go here. What about this thermometer? I've not really thought about this thermometer yet. Now, what I can see is I've got to be a bit careful with this string of digits. If I make this too high, I'm going to run out of digits for this sequence here. So if that's, yeah, in fact, if that's a five, we've got a problem. Because then those five, these three digits have to be selected from six, seven, eight, and nine, as do these. And there are only four digits that are the digits six, seven, eight, and nine, six, seven, eight, and nine, that's four. And there are five digits in that column. Five digits that would have to be selected from four different digits will not work uh, because you'll definitely have to repeat a digit. So that is not a five. This is a one, two, three, or four. Now let's check four. Does four, four would give us, four would give us a five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuple in the column. Ah, no, 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 four doesn't work. Not because of that, but because, well, there has to be a quintuple now on five, six, seven, eight, and nine in this column. Where are the five and six in the quintuple? In these squares somewhere. In fact, they would have to be there and there, but that square definitely doesn't have any values left. So this is not four, um, which means it's got to be one, two, or three. Let's have a look at three. If we put three here, then now we don't have a quintuple anymore. But three in this box now has to go there. Yeah, this breaks. This is very clever, actually. If this is three, three has to go here. We know orange is equal to those two squares. But where are we going to put this digit in this box now? There's nowhere it can go. 
because we know these two are definitely very high digits. This is a very low digit, it's lower than three, and there's nowhere it can go because you can't put it on this thermo because anything on this thermo has to be higher than three. So now we're down to just one and two. And whatever this digit is, therefore, has to live here, doesn't it? So this is now a one or a two, which means it's not orange. OK, I'm getting there slowly. So now if orange is in these two squares, blue can't be in these two squares. So now blue is definitely in these two squares, which means this can't be a one, I think. Because if this was a 1, I'd need to put it in one of those two squares in the box, and it can't go there. So now we've got... Well, this must be the lower digit, so that's a 2 or a 3. That's a 3 or a 4. Um, I think I've nearly worked this out, but not quite. That digit, what do we know about that? That just has to be... Anything that's higher than a 3 in theory, that could even be a 4. Oh, I think I'm running out of... Am I running out of ideas here? Have I... The logic is very tight. It's very interesting as well, actually, the effect of all these things on each other. These have to go... These five all see each other. Oh, good grief, right. I s oh, right, okay, so, sorry. I've now understood, I think, how this works. The, oh, goodness me, right, okay. Let me just do I want to get rid of this highlighting? I think I do, just for a moment. Let me just get rid of all highlighting. And instead, I am going to highlight this, this shape. That shape there. In fact, I'm, I'm going to highlight it in a different colour. I'm going to highlight it in yellow. Let us look at yellow and analyse it. Because these squares, you can see very clearly, these all have to be different digits. But these three squares also have to be different from all of those squares because these ones are on the same thermo as those so they can't repeat on the thermo and these ones see those as well so all of these digits have to be different and there are eight of them and th so these are eight different digits and well the, the next question is what digit cannot go in these eight digits and that's a digit that's called one because one can only go on the bulb of a thermo. So these squares are actually the digits two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now the question is which one of them is a two? Because it, it can only be this one. So that's a two, that's a three, that's the only place a three can go. This is now a one. We know, we know from our earlier work that this this domino here is the same as this domino, so respecting the thermometer, this is now a 2 or a 3. Um, these two squares, now let's actually, let's get rid of the highlighting now and go back to our earlier squares. We knew that those were the same, didn't we? So these squares, but we don't know the order. Okay, so we just know those are 7s, 8s and 9s. And this square... Um, that square, I think, oh, okay, I'm not sure we know what that square is. I think it just has to be anything that's higher than a three. Bobbins, right, okay, but that's now a one. Just filling in this thermo. So now we can put a one down there. We can, we can put a two over here somewhere, but two, can it go on the thermo? N no. You can't put two on this thermo in this domino because this would be a one and it will clash. So two goes here by Sudoku. Three goes in one of those squares by Sudoku. One can't go, one can't go on a the thermo 
So 1 goes in those squares by Sudoku. That means 1 goes in these squares by Sudoku. Seems a slightly strange thing to say when doing a Sudoku. The logic that you're doing that is using the rules of Sudoku. But it seems like quite a lot nowadays. We don't actually have to do much Sudoku, or at least not an overwhelming amount. Um, OK. Now what do we do? Now we can say that this square is interesting. That square is interesting because it can't, whatever's in this square, make it yellow. No, I won't. I'm going to make it green. This is a green cell. So it doesn't go in those three squares by Sudoku. And it doesn't go on its own thermo by thermo. And it doesn't go there because it's definitely not a two. So that this triple, therefore, is a one three green triple. Things you never thought you'd say in adult life. We've got a one three green triple here. Now, that means one of those two squares is green, doesn't it? Because green is not three. So, ah, okay, that's not useful then. Four, five, seven, eight, or nine is the third digit that is green. Ah, okay. Um, okay, that's a bit strange. Right, so we don't actually know what this digit is at all. It's four, five. Oh, it's, I suppose it's not eight or nine, is it? If it's eight or nine, we'd have to put at least ten into this square. So this square is actually only four, five, or seven. Which. So this is a one, three, and a four, or a five, or a seven. Right, okay, so right, so where do we put high digits in this row? The answer is not in very many places at all. These squares are not 8 and 9. You can't put 8 and 9 on this thermo, so I think that is an 8-9 pair in row 3. Now, that means these three squares are not 8 and 9. This one, unfortunately, well, it is. Well, no, it might be seven. Uh, but at least one of eight and nine have to be on this thermo. Um, this thermo here can't start with one, two or three. So that's at least a four here, four, five, six. So this is at least a seven. So that's seven, eight or nine. That creates a triple in box six. So this is four, five or six then. Wow, this is very complicated. Um, and I've got to be a big uh, six might break because that's going to get too high. If that's six, seven, eight, and we'd have two nines into those two squares. Let's just check that. So if that's six, seven, eight, nine, and this has no value. So that one is not a six. Now, can it be a five? If it's a five, this would be at least a seven. That might actually be possible, mightn't it? Um, hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, so maybe I've got to label this up then. Four, five here. So this has got to be five, six, or seven. This has got to be six, seven. Or eight, but we know that this can't be seven, and we know that this can't be eight because if that's seven, this becomes an eight nine pair and that breaks. So these squares are actually more restricted than we might first have thought. But I'm getting a bit lost as to exactly how I'm meant to use this logic. Um,
two, three. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Two over here. Two may be restricted down there. Look, what's that doing on thermos? Where can we put? We can't put a two actually in those two squares in box seven because they're too too far along the thermo. Yeah. Oh, okay. So two has to be in one of those two squares. That's a little deduction because you can't, again, you can't put twos here because you'd end up having to put zero in the bulb. So two is in one of those three squares, which, yeah, I accept is the most <laughs> trivial of deductions. Um, oh dear. <laughs> so what on earth do we do now? Those were the same as those. Um, do I know anything extra about this thermo? What about this thermo? Do we know anything about this at all? I don't think we do. Um, the only restriction I can see on this thermo relates to this square, which again can't be an eight look, because if that's an eight, this would be a nine and this would break. So this square has a maximum value of seven, six. So that has to, oh, good grief. So that has to be one, two, oh, it can't be one actually. Oh, okay, so that's two, three, four, or five. Mark would be proud of me. Um, okay, is that helpful? Um, don't think so. So this is three, four, five, or six, and this is four, five, six, or seven. And this is a whole multitude of things that are very high. Um, I will put it in, why not? That's a five cell, a five cell option filled in there. Ah, <laughs> okay, so. How do we make more progress? I have not got a clue. Is there something we can do with this thermo? We know these squares are at least five and six, but they could be as high as eight and nine. I wonder whether we can just coming back to this uh, this funny shape here, which we know contains all of the digits. So the nine in this sequence is definitely in one of those two squares. The eight is definitely in one of those three squares. The seven we don't know about. The six could be up here. Ah. The five could be there the four is in one of the four is in one of two places the four is in one of those two cells so <laughs> this is challenging isn't it ah ah that cell that cell can that actually be five isn't that going to push this up five six seven eight nine isn't that going to give this no value maybe i've misunderstood that if this is a five i'm seeing that goes this goes six seven eight nine which means that yes it doesn't work that's very clever if this is five this becomes a seven through the impact this has on this thermo and now there there need to be two digits between five and seven but there is only one there's only possible the only possibility is six so actually i can eliminate five from there that has to be a four that means this is not a four which means this is at least a six now so let's look at this this is six seven or eight this is seven eight or nine still i don't think it's done anything um it's, that four has not affected the four has affected that square it's removed a four from this position Has that done anything? 
Yes, that is really weird indeed. Okay, now let's look at these three or four squares. This square was the one that was interesting me because I was thinking, can this be four? If this is four, that's a three, definitely, because we've got to go four, three, two, given that this cannot be a one. So if this is a four, this is a three. What happens if this is not a four? Well, that's a five, six, seven, triple. So this can't be a five or a six, and it's still a three. So this one, this square here is always a three, which means this square is always a two. And that means, Ah, uh, three is now restricted to one of two places in box eight. Um, ah, I can place two in box six by Sudoku again. These twos interact. Lock a two into one of those squares. That means this square has become a two. That means two's in one of the, oopsie, two's in one of these three squares. which means um, it means something I'm sure but I don't know what this is about as intricate a thermo sudoku as I can remember by the way this is very very interesting um, and and I sort of started here and I'm working my way down here a bit like gravity. Is that why it's called gravity? Oh, that would be lovely if that's right. If, if it's sort of a hint that you have to start high and then gradually drop. Um, come on, what's this telling me? Lost my train of thought now. Don't lose your train of thought, Simon. That's not going to help you. I got this too. I got some twos down here I've got a one two seven eight nine ah okay look at this domino where does this domino go in box six now and the answer is only in those squares these squares are selected from four five and six so they're definitely not in those five squares that means these squares have to be four five or six Unfortunately, I don't think I can even say for certain that there is definitely a five in here because this could be a five. Ah, <laughs> um, I've almost got, oh, I've almost got a triple across there. Four, five or six of so the three. The three must be in one of those two squares in this box, which means there's a three in one of those squares. Okay, um, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> what do I do now? Maybe I've got to look at this one. Well, uh, the problem with this one, or maybe I've got to look at that one. Where's the weak point on this one? Maybe I can do something similar to what we did up there. So let's just have a look at this. So this one is not a seven cell thermo. It's anything but that's only a five cell thermo. Two, three, four. And this one is a five cell thermo as well. So the, so the purple thermo is one longer, but the gray thermo is two shorter. And the geometry is a little less clear as well. So this domino here, um, I don't know, I'm running out of colors a little bit here. Um, red, I've not used red, um, has to go in two of those three squares. But you can see that these are expected to be quite low digits because they're near the bulb of the thermo. And these would be quite low as well because they're near the bulb of the thermo. Now this square, has to go in one of those three squares, which is more interesting if, well, if it's on the thermo, it would be interesting. Three, four here. This square might be restricted because it can't be, obviously it can't be one, it's not in the bulb, and it can't be three or four. So if it couldn't be two, can we rule two out from this square? 
If that's a 2, that's a 2. Good grief. Right, OK, I don't know if this is what you're meant to do, but there's no way that can be a 2. Because if it's a 2, that's a 2 in box 7. And what do we have to put in both bulbs? 1. And now where do we put a 1 in box 5? Nowhere. <laughs> These ones rule out those squares. And this one rules out that one. So that doesn't work. So you can't put... Right, let's just unwind that then. We can't put a 2 here. So that, yeah, OK, this is very interesting now. Because if this can't be a 2, it has to be at least a 5. 5, 6, 7, 8. So, right, here we go. So this is 5, 6. This is 6, 7. This is 7, 8. This is 8, 9. Now, what does that mean? So this... Oh, look, I could... Shit, this bulb could go here. If, if I knew there had to be a 5 or a 6... Actually, how can there be a 5 or a 6 there? Am I going to run out, run into problems? If this is a 5 or a 6, I'm going to have too many high digits, aren't I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, I am. There's no way that square is a 5 or a 6. This square... That might be possible. If this is a 5 or a 6, this would be a 6 or a 7 or an 8 or a 9. We'd have a quintuple here. We'd need 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s into those squares. And that might work. But what about that square then? One, two, three, four. This is at least... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, here we go. This square, because of this thermo, is at least a 5. So let's label it. I'm actually going to label it fully. 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. But this square sees that one and it sees all of those. And these, these five all see each other. This one sees that one on its thermo and that one by Sudoku. And obviously it sees those two in its box and in its row. So these five see each other. So they are a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 quintuple sort of a bent quintuple going around the corner there. Now the 5 in that bent quintuple has to be vertically in one of those two squares, which means 5... Oh, this is lovely. Look, now this is a 7. That is so... that is so clever. Good grief. So now this is a 7 up here, and that's going to fill in my thermo with 8 and 9. Now that square is a 7 now. And we know that we must have mirroring between those. So that's got to be a 7, which means there's a 7 in one of those squares. 289 here is telling me what. Oh, yeah, my 7 goes into my 1, 3 green combination. So now I've got 1, 3 and 7 here. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look, 1, 3 and 7 here gives me this digit. That's a 6. That's a 5. That's a 4. Ah, and that's an 8 or a 9. OK. Well, that's fine. I don't think that matters too much, does it? Now I've got some digits to place over on this side of the grid, which are 4, 5 and 6. Get rid of the 1s and 3s in here. Get rid of the 1s in those squares and label these up with 1, 5 and 6 as well. That one is not 5 because we got the 5 vertically in column 4 already. And OK. This square is not 5 anymore because these can't be 5. But that doesn't really affect this digit, does it? Um, so... How do we keep this going now? I feel like we've got some momentum at last. Um, I've got to find a way. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, now I'm going to start using this square instead. What is this square? 
because this square <laughs> sees this quintuple in its entirety. This is such a strange puzzle. It's incredibly clever. It's exactly what you'd expect from Jovial. She makes these, these just very clever ideas come to life. Now, this square, of course, sees this square on its thermo, because it can't be the same as that. It sees that square by Sudoku, and it sees these three in its box. So this cannot be any of the five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuple. So this has to be a one, two, three, or a four, but it's the fourth cell on its thermo, so that is a four. That is just forced. That means this is not a four. And it, well, better than that, once that's a four on a four, and it's the fourth cell on its thermo, we can fill in, whoopsie, we could if I wasn't gonna misclick and lose my army. Ah. We can fill in all those squares. Now I can fill in one in the central box. I can get rid of a one up there and get rid of a one here. I can place one in box seven by the power of Grayskull. Note Sudoku again. Um, now, what have I done here? I've now got a one, two, three, four quadruple. So that can't be one, that can't be three, that can't be two. Four is now a little bit restricted in. Oh, I was about to get excited about box five and the four here, but in fact, four seems to be possible in that square. Ah, but maybe it's not because now I know my four five thing up here. So I know what those are, which means that this square is not a four or a five. This is, oh, look, now I've got a six, seven pair out of nowhere in box five, which means that square is a five which means that square's a six, a one, and a five. This six tells me the six and the seven. That might do some work for us. Um, maybe. Seven, look, can't go in that square. So, Oh, this is quite interesting. If we study our quintuple again, this the 7 in the quintuple has to be in one of those two squares. So that's not a 7. The 8 has to be in one of those four squares. Don't know if we can do anything with that. 9... Don't know the not actually if we just rather than think about the quintuple ask where nine goes in fact where does nine and five go in box seven they've got to go in those squares so that's not five nine is in one of those two um And what does this mean? That, oh, oh, good, right. This being a seven means that's not a seven. So I've now got an eight, nine pair in row five, which means that's not a nine. That means this is a nine. That means those squares are fours, fives, and sevens, which I might be able to do something with because this can't be four. Oh, that's very annoying. I've got a five, six, seven triple in column three. That doesn't look like it's resolved. Um, and I've got a four, five, seven triple in box four. So the digits I'm missing in this box are threes, sixes, and eights. And somehow I don't know anything about those digits at all. That's incredible. Three, six, and eight, okay. Do I know? No. Um, I was wondering if I knew where eight went in this box, but I don't think I do. Eight could obviously be in those two squares, but if eight is here in the quintuple, eight would have to be vertical there. So oh, I don't know. Um, right, where do I look now? What's this square? This has to be in the bulb, so it's got to be, oh, and it's not one or four, so this is, 
This is two, three, or five. Oh, it's not two or five. Right, okay, this is just a three. That's the only option that's lower than what we've got to put in this square. So we get the three. We get the three in box nine, therefore. How many threes have we got? Several. Ah, uh, but not enough. We've not got the three in this box. Oh, I've got a three, six pair look in this box to finish it off in those two squares. Um, no, you're right. That doesn't seem to do anything. I've got a six in one of those squares. I've got an eight, nine pair in column five, column nine. Uh, so, oh, no, I was about to say where's, where does six go in row six because of this six. But actually, look, we can put a six in one of two places. And that is annoying. Um, okay, what do we need to put in this box? We need to put sevens in one of those two squares. Yes, I know I was talking about this box, but I just noticed the sevens. Fives are in one of those squares. Oh, sixes are down here as well, but we don't know where. So here we need two, eight, nine, two, four, eight, nine. Ah, four is in one of those two squares. Oh, okay, well, that's interesting. So now where does four go in box eight? It's got to go there, which means four is in one of those two squares, I think, in box nine. Now that square cannot be seven. In fact, that square's got to be eight or nine, so it's got to be higher than seven. Okay, that's yeah, that was just obvious. I just didn't see it. And it doesn't actually help us. Right, okay. So what do we do now is the question nine in this box has to be in one of those two positions i don't know whether we know anything about nines in the columns four five and six do we or if we do um, i've forgotten it i think um oh i've got a th three six eight i've got a three six eight triple in this row so that means those two squares are a four nine pair and I know the order, good lord. Is that right? I think it is. Well, okay, I'm taking that. That's gotta be a four. That's gotta be a nine. Now these two squares at the bottom therefore are a two eight pair. And I don't know if we know the order of those. Can't see how that's resolved off the top of my head. This square's not an eight anymore, which means there's definitely an eight up there. And now the nine has ruled itself out of this square. And now, now we ask the question, where does nine go in our quintuple? And the answer is only here. So that's a nine. That doesn't unfortunately resolve the thermo though. It does mean we can remove nine from those two squares and possibly ask the question where does nine go in box eight now although that doesn't seem to be resolved bother um no it's not is it ah okay good grief <laughs> what do i do now then <laughs> There is so much logic crammed into this puzzle. It really is. It's, it's an amazing construction. I've almost, I've almost worn out all the thermos as well, I think. I've got to do something on this one, like the, this, resolve this quintuple somehow. But aside from that, they're all finished. Well, I suppose that square's not finished either. But there's not much left to do. So I think we're going to have to pick rows and columns and try and pencil mark them or spot something about them. So where should we start? We shall start with where the cursor is. We'll look at... Oh, I'm not, oh yeah, no, that is, that's not bad because there's an 8-9 pair. So this is effectively five cells we know here. So we need ones, fours, fives and sixes into these squares. So that's one, four. This is a five or six. This square is one, five or six. 
No. Okay. Oh, I've got a five six pair in. Ah, I've got a five six pair now in row eight. So I'm missing twos, sevens, eights, and nines. Ah, this can't be a five. Okay, that's a, that's progress. So that must be a five. Which means this square is a six, seven, or an eight to complete, and it's not six. It's not six because we know the six is in one of those two squares. So, oh, look, now I've got a seven, eight pair, which means this is a six. Good grief. That means that's a five, that's a seven. Which means that square is not a five. Not a five. I don't want to get rid of the right digit there. So, this is a four or a six. This five is now giving me a five here. That's a four. That's a four. That's a six. This is no longer a six. I've got a three, seven, eight triple in this column to place. I've got. Hmm, don't know if I can resolve that. But placing this six is interesting, isn't it? Because remember that this is a quintuple on the digits five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And now this six means this square is a five which means this square is an eight, which means this square is an eight, and that's a seven. And now we are cooking with gas. Threes and sevens go in, sixes and eights go in. Three goes here, six goes here, I think. Eight here resolves the eight, resolves the two, resolves the eight, resolves the nine. Are we on the home stretch? Maybe, just maybe. Um, this, no, I still haven't resolved this, still haven't resolved these. What about this 4, 5? No, that's not resolved. Ah, uh, that square's resolved though. That's got to be a 6. Boom. Um, now, what are these ones? These are 1s, 2s and 7s. Ah, that is annoying because that can't be 1, that can't be 2 and that can't be, yep, you've guessed it, 7. 6 here it comes out of that square. So this is a one, ah, right, yeah, look at this row. Ones, twos, and fives to place. One and five already in the column. This is a two, that's a one, that's a seven, that's a two. This square becomes a five, that means this is a six, that's a five, and that's a four, and that's a four, and this is a one by Sudoku. Now we need a seven in that column. This has to be an 8, that fixes my 8 and 9, fixes my 8 and 9, that's a 9, and I think that is how to solve a very, very clever puzzle indeed, yes. Wow, 47 minutes of pure, unadulterated logic from Jovial. That's a really clever puzzle. It really is, there's so many ideas here, and it's, it's very skillfully set. I'm not sure how efficient my solve was. I did my best, obviously, but I have a feeling I certainly could have spotted this idea around this sort of eight cell region here more quickly. And I just couldn't see a quick way of resolving everything going on off these, off these diagonals. I love the idea if I meant to sort of fall with gravity towards the bottom left. That's very much how the solve felt like it should move but maybe I should have come down here earlier I might have been able to work my way back up more efficiently um, but brilliant as always brilliant uh, let me know in the comments how you got on and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic